Good morning. I'm Mrs. Mantech, a third grade teacher, and I am going to read to you chapter seven, The Case of the Colorful Cards. When Kelsey brought me back on Monday morning, everybody rushed over. Phew, that's some black eye, Rosie exclaimed. Actually, it was purple and gray with pink and green stripes, but I didn't correct her. <clears throat> How's it feel? Mr. E asked her. Fine, Kelsey said. She set my cage on the table in front of the window and walked very carefully and gracefully back to her desk. Boing, boing, Og greeted me cheerily. Then Simon came in and everybody wanted to touch the bump on his head. Okay, said small Paul, but not too hard. That's nothing, Thomas said, holding the back of his head. I hit my head and had to get 95 stitches here. That explains a lot, just Joey muttered as he walked by. Tall Paul bent down and looked at Thomas's head. Funny, there's no scar. 95? Simon asked. I'm pretty sure he didn't believe Thomas. Are you sure? If you got 95 stitches in your head, you'd be sure, Thomas said. My friends all went to their seats, and as soon as the bell rang, helpful Holly raised her hand. Mr. E, we always have a vocabulary test on Monday, she said. There were lots of groans from the other students, and some of them went, shh, shh. Well, we won't have one this Monday, Mr. E replied, because, because today we'll have, he didn't finish his sentence, because just then, Mr. Morales walked into the classroom. He was wearing a tie with horses all over it. I wonder if they make a tie with hamsters all over it. Class, I have another note from Mrs. Brisbane. She says I'm getting stronger every day. Today, I was actually able to put on my slippers. I think of you all every day. Slippers? Kelsey said that's what ballerinas wear. And Mrs. Brisbane had said she'd be dancing soon. So just as I thought, Mrs. Brisbane really was <clears throat> learning ballet. I have an address for her now, Mr. Morales said, so I think it would be nice if you'd all make cards and we'll send them off to her. Great idea, Mr. E said. We'll start on them right away. After Mr. Morales left, Mr. E passed out colorful paper. He told my classmates to start writing their messages to Mrs. Brisbane while he gathered up art supplies. Holly's hand shot up in the air. They're over there on the shelves. I can show you. No, thanks, Holly. You start writing, Mr. E replied. Now, be sure to make your card reflect your personality. Can I take this home and work on it tonight, Daniel asked. Try to do it now, Daniel, Mr. E told him. If you don't finish, you can take it home. Soon, all of my classmates were bent over their tables working. All except for Joey. He stared at his paper but he didn't write one word. I scrambled up on the top of my cage to see if I could read what my other friends were writing, but I couldn't make out the letters from so far away. I wanted to write to Mrs. Brisbane too, but I didn't dare take out my notebook in case someone saw it. And as much as I liked my friends, my notebook is private. No one should ever <clears throat> read something that's private. While my friends wrote things about, while my friends wrote, things were clinking and clanging and rattling and rolling around as Mr. E poked around in the art supply bins. Soon, there was a big mound of markers and boxes of colored pencils and crayons on the desk. I saw more construction paper, brightly colored yarn, scissors, glue, and jars of buttons, beads, and glitter. When Mr. E told my friends to take what art supplies they needed for their cards, Everyone raced forward at once. I wanted those markers, Simon said. I got here first, Thomas replied, clutching the markers to his chest. Ooh, feathers, Phoebe said. Rolling Rosie rolled, her, rolled toward the desk. Hey, I need those, she said. Ow, Rosie ran over my foot, Sophie complained. Did not, Rosie said. My friends never acted like that when Mrs. Brisbane was in the classroom. I could hardly tell what anyone was saying 
because there was so much commotion. Suddenly, my whole body was shaken by the shrill and painful blast of a whistle. Everyone got quiet then. I didn't even have to look to know what Miss, that Mrs. Wright was standing in the doorway. What's going on here? She asked. We're making cards for Mrs. Brisbane, the substitute answered. What you're making is an uproar, she said. I could hear you way down the hall. And according to the school policy, you should not be able to hear what's going on in a classroom from the hallway. Mrs. Wright walked into the classroom and I saw that she wasn't alone. Hurry up, Harry was with her. I don't suppose you noticed that one of your students was missing, she said. Harry hung his head and looked extremely unhappy. I guess I'm going, I'm still getting used to all the students, Mr. E said. Come on, Harry, make a card for Mrs. Brisbane. Mrs. Wright fingered the whistle hanging down from her neck. I braced myself just in case she blew it again. Mr. Edo Papapopoulos, at, at Longfellow School, we don't permit our students to roam the halls whenever they want, Mrs. Wright said. I found Harry staring into the window of room 14. She sounded shocked. They're building an amazing tower, Harry explained. What's amazing is that you weren't in your classroom like all the other students at school, Mrs. Wright said. I will have to report Harry to the principal. I'll handle this, Mr. E said. Mrs. Wright looked surprised. Really? You'll put in a report? Mr. E nodded. That's right, Mrs. Wright. I was surprised and relieved when Mrs. Wright and her whistle left the room. But I was sorry that Hurry Up Harry was going to get in trouble. He'd gotten in trouble a lot at the beginning of the year for being late but he'd been so much better until Mr. E arrived. Do I have to go to the office, Harry asked. No, Harry, but this class is just as much fun as room 14, Mr. E said. Come on, let's make cards. Make them funny and bright with lots of pizzazz. Pizzazz? What on earth was pizzazz? I'd never heard that word before. I'd never seen it on a vocabulary list either. Was it like glitter and beads and glue? Or was it like pizza? Whatever it was, it was definitely a mystery word that I found very pie-whacking. My friend spent the rest of the morning on the cards, working furiously. Feathers flew, scissors snipped, and there was glitter everywhere. Joey still seemed to be struggling as he stared at his card. Maybe Joey needed help, but Mr. E didn't seem to notice. I think Mrs. Brisbane would have noticed. When the bell for lunch rang, my friends raced out the door while Mr. E restacked the art supplies. Everything okay, Ms. Max said as she poked her head in the door. Fabulous, Mr. E said. Better than I ever expected. Wait. I'll walk to the lunchroom with you. At last, Og and I were alone. Og, I squeaked excitedly. Boing, he twanged. The class is a mess without Mrs. Brisbane, I shouted. The students are falling back into their bad habits. Harry's late again, and there's too much noise, and no vocabulary quiz or Sherlock Holmes. Og splashed wildly in the water side of his tank. Boing, 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 boing. I could tell he was almost as upset as I was. And I want to make Mrs. Brisbane a card, I said. Boing, boing. And I want to find out where she is, I added. Boing, boing, boing. There was so much to think about. I wondered if Harry would get back to class on time. I wondered if Mr. E would teach us something in the afternoon. I wondered if Mrs. Brisbane would ever, ever, ever be back. My fellow students came back after lunch, all except one. Hurry up, Harry wasn't missing, but forgetful Phoebe was. However, she showed up right after the bell rang. Sorry, Mr. E, she said. Not a problem, he answered. Take a seat because now we're going to play math monsters. He took his fingers and pulled out the corners of his mouth 
and the corners of his eyes. He looked pretty creepy, especially when he made a scary laugh, like a witch. After all, you know what's coming soon, he continued. There was a pause, and then Thomas shouted, Halloween! Then everyone else started shouting, Halloween! My classmates seemed happy about it. But I remembered last year's Halloween with creepy, smiling pumpkins and ghosts and goblins and monsters. Now it was coming back. Eek! After school, Og and I had some visitors. Hello, Mr. E greeted them. What can I do for you? We were in this class last year, a soft voice said. It was Speak Up Saya. She was one of my best friends in room 26 last year. We came to see Humphrey and Og. Be my guest, Mr. E said, and soon Og and I were surrounded by familiar, friendly faces. Hi, Humphrey Dumpty. Boy, bad news about Mrs. Brisbane. That was good old AJ's loud voice. Yes, 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 I agreed. Poor Humphrey. Poor Og. You must miss Mrs. Brisbane a lot, said Golden Miranda. She was, she was such a wonderful friend with a terrible dog. But I'm sure she misses you too. Hi, Humphrey. Winky says hi, said Mandy, whose hamster Winky was a friend of mine. It was great to see my old friends, but it was sad too because they reminded me of happy days in room 26 with Mrs. Brisbane, my teacher. Or was she? Humphrey's Detectionary. It's a mystery to me why humans enjoy a very frightening holiday like Halloween. <laughs>